All right, today we're going to talk about throttle-based dynamic low-pass filters. Okay, so before we get started, big thanks goes to Ken Mitchell, Chris Thompson, and George Hartman for so much work they put into this implementation of this, again, throttle-based uh, dynamic low-pass filter adjustments that we can now make in Betaflight. This was the PR, the, or the pull request, that uh, you can review. Uh, in here, uh, CTZ Sues or Chris Thompson did a nice write-up on it. And I also, you can see the, the graphs of how it works, and then also uh, justification of why it's a good thing. And I also did a little video here on um, the benefits of the dynamic low-pass filter uh, implementation. So what is this new code, a new feature in Betaflight? First, this is a new feature proposed for the stable release of Betaflight 4.0. It's still within a build number uh, between Betaflight 3.5 uh, 0.2, I guess they're at, and 4.0. Uh, a lot of times, if you say, hey, I'm flying Betaflight 4.0, the devs will say, there is no Betaflight 4.0, and, and they're right, because it hasn't been released. We're in build numbers between releases right now. So this is within the master code, and it is available on Jenkins. We'll show you that here in a second. But um, you should really refer to it as, as build numbers and not Betaflight 4.0. And I, I make that mistake as well, so I apologize. So getting back to it, what is this? Essentially, it allows the, you to choose to raise your Stage 1 low-pass filters on the gyro and or on the D-term based on your throttle percentage. So I'll drop this link below, and you can download this spreadsheet. It's the... <laughs> Betaflight 4.0.x filter delay calc v7 and purple copper was the uh, code name for the development of the these features as we were working on it in slack and uh, doing test flights so on and so forth just so we knew what the heck we were all flying because um, as we a new build would come up that code name would change so purple copper was the last one Okay, to dissect this a little bit, I have the defaults up that you will get when you flash the 1198 or higher build number that's out on Jenkins here or in the configurator. And you can see with here, uh, what we're showing is this is the attenuation of the filter itself and then the phase delay associated with that. So it's a 1.0 attenuation means it's not attenuating it at all. So it's whatever the signal is coming in, it's multiplying it by 1, that's it. The phase delay, though, is because it is filtering out higher frequency noise. As you can see here, now we're up at seven, you know, uh, 200 hertz and higher, and it is doing filtering there. It's multiplying whatever the amplitude of the oscillation is by 0.35, for example, here right at 325 hertz. And there's an associated phase delay, and that phase delay ripples back, and it affects, unfortunately, our control frequencies, which is usually one to 20 hertz, and then our prop wash range is usually 25 up to really 50 hertz. I have it up to 90. We'll talk about that in a second. But as you can see here, there's phase delay for each of the filters that are turned on. And as I raise or lower my throttle here, you can see the dynamic notch moves around, but that's about it. Now the latency does go down. You can see this is the overall latency. So you can see as I go up to higher percentages of throttle, since the dynamic notch is moving up, then my phase delay or overall latency is going down. And after the dynamic notch improvements were fully completed, really kind of moved on to, hey, you know, what what could we do with the low pass filters? Is there any way to make those dynamic? The first iteration was trying to strap those to the cutoff frequency of the dynamic notch. But we found out that the dynamic notch when you ramp up and throttle your, the ramping of the noise or the vibration in your quad is delayed. It's just naturally that's how it is. It's usually offset around, I think it was like 30 to 50 milliseconds later before the vibrations actually, um, you know, the motors span up and those vibrations made their way into the gyro signal and, and you saw them there. And the whole intent of moving up the low pass filters is to try to get this phase delay down. If you really look at this, you know, 1.3 milliseconds that's pretty high, 0.5. The dynamic notch is only doing 0.3. So th this thing's awesome. You know, it really has a huge cut in amplitude of the noise right at the notch center when it moves and tracks that 
peak noise, and it has re relatively low, pretty darn low, phase delay associated with these low-pass filters. They have pretty high phase delay associated with them. So how can we get them up? And more importantly, it's the stage one or low-pass one on the D-term and gyro that have the most. So how can we get those specifically moved up? Well, then it later progressed to, how about we just couple those directly to your throttle input? So as you raise the stick, the low-pass filter moves up with it instantaneously. And CTZ, or Chris, worked on the mathematics to basically track uh, or mimic the motor band that we were seeing by looking at plasma tree plots. So if you look at plasma tree graphs, and this is the raw noise from a quad, you can clearly see the motor band here. So this is at 40% throttle. You can see the vibrations are down here at just above 200 hertz. It's around 250 hertz, you know, 300 is halfway in between here. So it's, it's about 250 hertz, maybe a little less. And then as throttle percent increases up to 100% throttle, you can see that that band of noise moves up to around 400 hertz. So since the noise is moving up, why can't we move our low pass filters up with it? So we're not getting essentially more attenuation here, we're just matching attenuation. And again, we're not getting lower amounts of noise up higher, but we are getting increased effectiveness in handling prop wash because we're reducing the latency on the gyro signal into the PID loop. So this maths you can see here in this Excel file, and you can dig into them if you want, is attempting to mimic that. This cut value here has to do with the idle value, which we'll talk about here in a second. You can see this is for the gyro and this is the D term, essentially the same same thing. These are This is following this sheet over here. It's linked. Okay, so in our classic filtering setup, which this is a pretty standard setup, you know, 120 for the low pass one, 300 low pass two. Uh, some setups you're turning off, you know, if you have a fairly, if you have an, I would say kind of a normal 8K uh, sampling or, or less 2K, 8K sampling, you could most of the time turn off low pass two. So you're getting down to a total latency of um, 4.9 milliseconds. So let's just turn that back on here for a second. So we're at 5.4, and most of the time when you're fighting through prop wash, you're up at around, you're above 50% throttle. It's usually 60, 70, I'm around 70 to 80% throttle on hard 180 turns. So with a dynamic low pass filters, you can specify a min value and a max value. Whenever your throttle percentage is below the idle percent, so anything below 20% throttle, it will slap up against the min value and stick to the min value. As you get up above the idle percentage, then it will start to transition from 120 hertz in this case up to 400 hertz max at 100% throttle. And it, what's it, it's following that curves I showed in those other two tabs so you can see exactly what it's doing there. So let's go ahead and turn on our dynamic low pass filters for low pass filter one and D-term low pass filter. And you can see our overall latency dropped way down to four milliseconds and that's at 70 percent throttle. Now the defaults in latest builds of Betaflight are to have your D-term low pass filter set to biquad. So recognizing that a biquad gives you twice the amount of cut above the cutoff value for the low pass filter itself, it was appearing to produce better results to have those as biquad as long as you were able to implement the dynamic low pass filter code and raise up that stage one or low pass one on the D term, because then you can bring that latency back down. So now we're about 4.7 milliseconds. So about a 0.7 millisecond decrease in overall latency. Now, if you have a quad that's fairly low bass noise, uh, I would recommend trying to turn off low pass two. And now you can see now we're getting down to 4.2. So what's going to happen here now with our dynamic low pass filters is that as I reduce my throttle and I'm doing a forward cruise, my latency goes up 5.4 and depends if I keep low pass two on, then it's at six. But as I go up and get into a prop wash condition where I'm really hammering the throttle, my latency drives down to address that. Now this is not going to give you more filtering it's kind of a cross. It's going to give you lower latency. It could give you a better result with filtering because we are changing these to biquad here. So give that a test and you can set these back and forth. 
you know, they can be PT1 or biquad. But the big push with this implementation is to tackle prop wash, to drive that latency down as much as possible. Okay, so if you're interested to check this out, how do you get this loaded on your quad? You go into Betaflight, you go to Flash Firmware, check these two boxes, set this to development, pick your target, and then any build after 1198 will have the new dynamic low pass filter code incorporated into it. You pick that, hit load firmware local, and then hit flash. Once that's flashed in, as you know, it's going to erase all your settings, so you'll have to do a diff before you would do that to go ahead and paste that in or copy some of those settings back in or just get it all reset up manually, whichever is your pleasure. Do make sure to hit reset uh, on here, regardless if you do a fully re full chip erase or not, just to make sure it clears out all the old settings. It's, it's really important. I actually do it twice. And I also make sure to uh, set my accelerometer. This is a test board, so it's just laying on the, on the desk here, so it's all flippity flop. After you're all flashed over and set up, if you go into the PID tab, then go into the filter settings tab, this is your min value. So our normal low pass one cutoffs, that's going to be the min value for when they're put into dynamic node. Do note that by default, the low pass filters are turned on to be in dynamic mode. You can see here it's set to by quad, and then you can see the defaults here for what the other uh, the stage two filters are set at by default. If you go to your CLI, so it's important to recognize that we're in an intermediate build. So the GUI, the latest revision you can see here, the Betaflight Configurator 10.4, that's the graph, that's the configurator you're going to use. There's no updated one or anything of that nature. Usually the configurator is always one release behind, one stable release. We're not even at a stable release. So you will have to go into the CLI for this. You type in get dyn helps if I type it right. And then you can see in here, if you are coming from 3.5, you're going to see some different um, options here for the dynamic notch filter. And if you want to learn more about those, I'll link to a video on the upper right. These variables down here are the dynamic low pass filter settings. And you can see here is our max for gyro, our idle for gyro, our max for D-term and idle for D-term. If you wanted to change your D terms from bi quad to PT1 or back and forth, type in get low pass. Because you saw before the D term stage one, the setting to either PT1 or bi quad was exposed in the graphic user interface, but low pass two was not. Now, I would recommend leaving them at bi quad for now. I always recommend when there's new things like this, just fly the defaults, see how it goes before you start noodling with things. If it's not meeting your expectations or you want to tweak it more, then go ahead and do that. My goal with these videos is to show you how things are working so you can make informed decisions yourself and adjust your own quad. If you want to turn off, if you want to have this build but do some comparison flights and turn off the dynamic low pass filtering, you would just set your idle percentages or your maxes to zero, one or the other. Uh, I just set the idles to zero. And that's not a bad idea to do that for the first flight. You know, get it all set up, get your filter set up how you normally do it. Go in here, change these to zero, both of them. Go fly it, record a log. This is what I would do. Record a log, view a plasma tree of it, see what the noise looks like. Then go ahead and change these up to 20 or 30, whatever you want your, you know, you, basically whatever percentage you want your low pass filter to start to raise from. So like, oh, I, want, I don't want them to start to raise until I hit 40% throttle. Then they'll start to raise and transition up to the, okay, well then you'd set these to 40. Um, 20 is the default, I leave it at 20 personally. I wanted to jump in and say, hey, if you're a person that just likes to fly to defaults, then just fly to defaults and don't noodle with stuff. If you're a person that in the future wants to turn this stuff off, you can turn everything off. Like I showed then, when you set those idle percentages to zero, it doesn't turn off the stage one low pass filter. It just makes it not be dynamic. So it just stays at the cutoff of 120 or whatever you have in the, set in the, the GUI. If you, for any of this stuff, if you want to turn off low pass filters, turn off the dynamic notch, turn off RC filtering, turn off, turn off. With Betaflight, you can turn off all the features. You could turn off stuff to get Betaflight back to Betaflight 2.0. So I guess as 
I see that criticism sometimes with, oh, I want to turn this stuff. Well, then you can do that. Just go turn it off. If you don't know what you need to or how, just, you know, drop a drop a comment or you know, find me on Facebook or, or whatnot or, or a lot of other people I'm sure will be able to tell you as well. But all this stuff can be used or not used. It's really up to you. All this stuff, you can just fly the defaults or you can noodle around with it. It's really up to you as well. So choose what you want. I did want to cover something here as well that now that attenuation is added in here, uh, while I have your attention hopefully, that uh, you know it's interesting to note that when you have a lower cutoff for a low pass filter, say it's at 90 hertz and it's you know if it's at bi quad or at PT1 for the filter type, look here at the attenuation. This is your prop wash band in here. You know, it's usually from, in my experience, 30 to 50 hertz. I went up all the way up to 90. I've really never seen prop wash above 50 hertz. If you have any, I'd love to see it. And I would really, really love to see it. I think it's a unicorn if it's above 100 hertz. I don't, I think that's a myth. Prop wash is not above 100 hertz. So our control band and our control frequency here is um, pretty low. Our control, you know, band is zero to 20 hertz and then we have some prop wash we're trying to address in here but anything above that we don't care about so notice when you have these low pass filters on D or any of them set lower like 90 hertz or even you know 80 or 60 I've seen some recommendations for some flight controllers to be pretty low you are attenuating your prop wash band so if you do have prop wash that's say 50 hertz you're you know multiplying whatever the magnitude of that prop wash is by 0.93 so you're not seeing the full prop wash if it's up to 90 hertz which I doubt but if it is it's multiplying it by 0.62 so that's pretty interesting to me and that's another benefit of you know having these dynamic that when you're at a higher throttle value it's moving these low pass filters up so it's clearing out this prop wash band so we're not attenuate we don't really want to be attenuating noise within the prop wash band when we're trying to address because you're essentially deleting data that is crucial to address the prop wash so if you're deleting that data out that that's not good uh, obviously it's gonna really hinder your quad to address it if it if you can't even see it okay so that's really it you know under your PIDs filter settings tab here's your minimums you can adjust this to PT1 or bi quad here if you wanted to do this, the stage two on the here you'd have to go into the CLI like I just showed to change that if you want to do PT1 I would leave these a bi quad give that a shot if I was going to change one of these I would leave D term 2 in by bi as bi quad and maybe change uh, D term 1 to PT1 give that a shot but you're going to get more noise coming through if you do that for the CLI showed those you you know for adjusting the max values for now and the idle that's where it's going to be hopefully you know that will get implemented into a, uh, a configurator at some point uh, probably over this winter at some time after Betaflight 4.0 is actually released. And then we showed how you can download at the link below this Excel spreadsheet. You're looking for this file name and input some values here and see how things are working and how things move around uh, using the throttle slider here. If you did want some more details on you know the, the builds that are going on with Betaflight you can always go to just Google Betaflight space Jenkins and go to the changes page here and you can see all the different nightly builds and then you know you can click on these commits here to actually see the code changes. The pull requests are a little bit more tricky. You have to go to the Betaflight at GitHub, go into Betaflight, go to pull requests and after they're merged they're closed so you have to kind of look at the closed uh, pull requests at that point. But if you do go in and just click on pull requests you can see some exciting new uh, features that are coming up. This launch control basically a launch mode for beta flight works great I know a bunch of guys are have tested that and are really liking it and uh, Bruce is doing a really knock up job on that and other stuff he's working on along with everybody else that's contributing to the project so you know open source project like that it's really seen, nice to see everybody come in and come together and contribute I did want to cover that you know this works on F3 targets um, you can see I'm just on my test board I don't have the anything set up here but this was you know the F3, this is not performance edition, so it doesn't have, uh, you know, might not have iTerm Relax enabled, stuff like that. I, I do plan on releasing some performance editions of this after Bruce, um, he discovered a way to improve the effectiveness or efficiency of this um, code and make it, you know, take a little bit less compute cycles. That's 
uh, pull request right now as well. So if you are running 32K sampling, it will probably max out your CPU. My first question is why are you running 32K? Our control frequencies are down to like 100 hertz. Multiply that by two for the night quest. And then you got some aliasing, maybe 2K. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a future video. But the, uh, yeah, if you're not running 32K and you're on an F4 board, you're probably fine. Honestly, this is only using like 10% CPU utilization. If you are running F3 for now, you might have to do 2K, 2K for it to run before it gets optimized. I'm sure that optimization will come. So honestly, if you just relax for a week or so, then uh, that will probably be merged by then. A big thanks again to all the contributors to Betaflight for all their volunteer and hard work. Uh, specific thanks to Ken, uh, Chris, and George on this one, and the other guys that, that did the testing as well on this. I believe Joshua Bardwell is also going to have a video showing some flight footage of, of this, so you can check out that video. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can hit me up on the U of e Tech Discord or just drop a comment below or if you see me around on Facebook. And uh, thanks, everybody, and I hope this helped.